Shalom to the nation of Israel. This is Barazal coming in the spirit and power of Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai Bahashem, Recha Kodash. Double honors to the apostles of Great Millstone and to the whole full elect, pushing his word and truth and sincerity across the four corners of the earth. Uh, this lesson to be tiled. You know, we're almost out of here. Right? <sighs> Lock here. Lock here. It's a long day. But the point is that this lesson is be taught. We're almost out of here because you can see that the wars are going on right now. So we're going to start off at Matthew 24 and 6. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all of these things must come to pass. But the end is not yet. Right? So right now in those times, there's, there's like, I think Apostle Dahar. I believe it was Apostle Hari. He did one of his videos. He actually checked to see how much wars are going on right now. There's 126 wars going on right now, presently. Now, the major wars, you have the one that's going on with Taiwan and China. Um, you got Russia, Ukraine, right? Those are the major ones that are popping up. And I know in Jerusalem, there's a war going on there, too. I just don't remember with who, All right? But, um, and then the rumor... The war of wars is World War Three. That's a rumor. The rumor of World War Three popping off. So what's going on with Ukraine and Russia, right? But the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilence and earthquakes in diverse places. And that's also been happening too. We have all these massive floods, these massive tsunamis, uh, earthquakes, uh, death, like animals just dying, fish just dying, birds just dying. Uh, yeah, like you know, whether it's by Esau doing it or it's just, it's just they just drop dead, the point is that it's happening, right? Um, you know, so the, the, the prophecies are coming to pass now. Before you know, World War Three pops off, the MOTB still has to be implemented, that still has to come, you know, to fruition, to full fruition, where they have chipping stations everywhere. Where it's like a normal thing, you know, someone you're talking to someone's like, Yeah, I just got my just got my chip or C hip, Slakia. You know, they might cut the video, but I got my C hip, you know, I'm gonna go start my car to that. It's just a normal thing, you know, when it's normal. And they're gonna use gradualism to do it, because that's how they always do, right? Because Yahweh Bashim Yashai uses gradualism on the right hand side, right? And he also uses it on the left hand side. Right? But it uses it through Satan. Esau, Edom, right? So, just to prove what I said about the wars, you can see on this, uh, let's see what comes on here. I'm just going to go down quickly. Wars and rumors of wars. This is a plague, pestilence, right? Rodent plague in Tibet has killed at least two people. It doesn't start off at two. You know, let's escalate. Uh, Ex-NATO chief is warning, and this is endtimeheadlines.org. Ex-NATO chief is warning that the world must be ready for a nuclear war with Russia and Putin's army collapses, right? It's rumors of wars. Um, you know, it's talking more pestilences. That thing that happened started two years ago. First, Biden vows to punish Saudis over OPEC plus oil production cuts, which can lead to a war. Right? How is he going to punish them? First, he might do some tariffs. Maybe he'll bomb some places and then that's it, war. Right? I'm not saying for sure that's how he's going to do it, but that's going to lead to war. The world is on edge right now. The world's on edge. Right? These nations are on edge. Nations should rise against nation. NATO said to conduct nuclear deterrence exercise as Russia rages at Ukraine. Right? Uh... Okay, apparently some deep sea or fish washes. So from the so that's kind of they're saying that's sign that things are about to get get bad when deep sea fish are are are, uh, are uh, coming to shore, so to speak, right? Which is true. Then you have this. I'm not gonna read it, but you can see it. Right. I think that's it when it comes to this. 
on this page. So we're gonna go to Second Ezra's 16 18. Second Ezra 16 18. The beginning of sorrows and great mornings that's happening right now. Look on the planet. The north, this is not a place of mirth, uh, of celebration, even though they might be still trying to push that, especially in um, Babylon, which is America. So I'm trying to push that mirth, 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 but it's it's like it's like it's like um it's like you have a leak in your your, uh, your ship and you're trying to plug it with band aids and then more leaks are springing. You keep plugging with, plugging with band aids, but eventually the water is still filling into the ship, right? So it doesn't even matter how many band aids you put and how fast. Uh, 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 you put the panties on the, the the leaks or the holes. The water's still filling with the the the, the ship's still filling with water, and you got to get the water out. And then on top of it, it's raining. So like eventually, that ship's gonna sink. That's what's happening right now. Right, no matter what you do, that ship's gonna sink. And a big wave comes. You know, uh, beginning of sorrow, the beginning of sorrows and great mornings, the beginning of famine and great death. Right, that's happening. The beginning of wars. And the power shall stand in fear. The beginning of evils. What shall I do when these evils shall come? Right? And what you should do is trust in the Lord. Trust in Yahweh Shem Yashai. Because that's your only way out. You can't trust in this fucking society. This society's done. This whole world is done. And thank goodness. Thank, thank Yahweh Shem Yashai for that. You know, this place is finally coming to an end. Now, like I said, we still have that motif. Still has to be uh, pushed and implemented but we're almost out of here we're almost out you know so now we're gonna go to psalms psalms 27 and one psalm 27 and one the lord is my light and salvation whom shall i fear the lord is my let me read it again Psalm 27 and 1. The Lord Yahweh Bashim Yoshai is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? Which is no one. The Lord Yahweh Bashim Yoshai is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? No one. When the wicked, even my enemies and my foes, come upon me to eat my flesh, eat up my flesh, they stumble and fell because the Lord, the Lord took care of them. He's protecting you. Though an host should encamp against me, my mind shall not fear. Though war should rise against me, in this will I be confident. So it doesn't matter. You have to trust in the Lord. You're going to have complete faith in the Lord. Yahweh No matter what comes your way, no matter what situation you're put in, it does not matter. You trust in the Lord. The more, he's going to put you in the more dire situation. And you got to trust in him even more. Right? And you have to be spiritual to see those dire situations. Because sometimes you have to just accept it and walk into it. Like those boys in the furnace. Sometimes he's just going to put you in it. And you have to realize that you're in it. Right? The point is whether you realize after. Or you realize before. You got to trust in the Lord. Okay. So now we're going to go to Psalms 112 and 7. Because your faith is going to be tested. Psalms 112 and 7. He shall not be afraid of evil tidings. His mind is fixed. Trusting in the Lord. There you go. And you know why? Because he has this. Isaiah 3, 3 and 6. And wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times. And strength of salvation. The fear of the Lord is his treasure. So the wisdom and knowledge will be the stability in thy times, the times that we're in right now and the times that we're coming into. It's not what's going to make you stable in these times that we're fast approaching, right? And the strength also is the strength of your salvation, right? The fear of the Lord is his treasure, right? So it's everything. It's everything, right? You got to, you got to, you gotta, uh, you gotta lay yourself in these scriptures. You gotta, you right. You gotta sub with the scriptures. You gotta get one with the scriptures. 
just start cutting things off and like you know right retuning or tuning your focus onto Yahweh B'Shem El Shai because we don't really have time for things that are outside of the truth we don't have time for that it's just a waste it's just wasted energy you're putting energy into the wrong thing right if I'm making an investment I want to put an investment in something that where I'm going to get a return there's no point in putting putting, putting uh, uh, cur uh, uh, what's it called not energy but putting and put in making an investment into making basically making a bad investment right you don't want to invest in something where it's not going to give you any return especially when you know the co the company or the business is going to go bankrupt business is going to be is going to is going to is going to disappear right if you know that business is going to disappear why would you make an investment in it it doesn't make any sense that's not being wise that's not using wisdom or knowledge right so you got to make an investment in the truth, in spirit, you know, in the spiritual uh, investment, right? In Yahweh B'Shem Yoshai. That's where all your energy needs to go into. Yes, you have to use the world for certain things to survive, but you got to use it, not abuse it, right? You don't want to put all your, 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 your energy in your, your, or your investment into the world because that's just wasted. You're not going to get a return out of that. And, that's, and say, let's say you get a return, a carnal return. That return is going to disappear just like this world. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, you want to put that big investment into the truth, into the spiritual, spiritual bank account. Okay? And then use the world for whatever you need just to get by, you know, your daily bread. Um, the last one. <clears throat> First Peter, uh, it's like a First Peter three and fourteen. First Peter three and fourteen. But and if ye suffer for righteousness' sake, happy are ye, and be not afraid of their terror, neither be troubled, but sanctify the Lord Yahweh in your minds, and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. Right? Because people are going to ask you. They're going to see that, you know, you're not... Because things are going to get crazy and people are going to look at you and you're not going to be freaking out. You're going to be calm. You're going to be calm. Like we read in Isaiah 33 and 6, wisdom and, wisdom and knowledge should be the stability of, the, of thy times. So you're going to be very stable, very calm, very confident. Because you already know what to do. You already know what is going on. You're not going to be freaking out. And if you are freaking out slightly... You're not going to show it because that's just your flesh kind of, you know, trying to pull you out of the spirit. But because you've been something with the Lord, because you've been training, because you've been uh, preparing your minds for what's coming, right? You're going to be ready. And those those slight things that you might feel, you're going to brush them off. And on top of it, the Lord's going to put the spirit on you to be ready and to deal with what's coming because you've been putting in the work, right? He's not going to reward people that are, haven't been working, right? It's not going to reward people in the spirit that haven't been working. So, you no. Know, it's just that simple. Anyways, uh, that's it on that. Uh, hopefully this lesson was edifying to the hopeful elect that pushes word and truth and sincerity across the four corners of the earth. And shallow until next time.